quick revision video on electrochemical cells and electrode potentials. So electrochemical cells convert chemical energy into electrical energy. Electrical energy results from the movement of electrons. And so electrochemical cells use chemical reactions that transfer electrons from one species to another. So they use redox reactions. So electrochemical cells are made from two separate half cells and each half cell is one of the two half equations in the redox reaction. Half cells contain an element in two different oxidation states. So we'll look at the types of half cell now. So the first one we'll look at is the metal, metal ion half cell. So in these you've got a metal rod dipped into a solution of its aqueous ions. So the example I'm using is the zinc 2 plus zinc half cell. So very simple picture would look like that. So you can see a, a zinc solid rod dipping into a 1 mole per decimeter cubed solution of Zn2 plus ions. So we've got two oxidation states of zinc there. As a zinc rod, the element is zero oxidation state and two plus ions, obviously plus two oxidation state. And the purpose of the metal rod, it enables the electrons to move to off from the half cell. You'll see that more clearly when we connect a couple of half cells together. And the second type of half cell we'll look at is the ion-ion half cell. So that's got aqueous ions of the same element in two different oxidation states. And the example I'm using is the Fe3 plus Fe2 plus half cell. So the diagram would look something like that. We've got a beaker with one mole per decimeter cubed solutions each of Fe3 plus and Fe2 plus. We don't have an iron rod now because that would give us three different oxidation states of iron, zero, plus three, and plus two. So instead we've got a platinum electrode now and that allows the transport of electrons to or from the half cell. So moving on to electrode potentials now, or also known as reduction potentials, you'll see why in a second. So these tell us how readily a chemical substance gain electrons. Remember, reduction is the gain of electrons. So using the two examples that we've seen in the previous slide, the Zn2 plus Zn um, half cell, that has an electrode potential of minus 0.76 volts, whereas the iron 3 plus 2 plus has a plus 0.77 volts electrode potential. Now, the more positive the electrode potential, the greater the tendency to gain electrons. So that's telling us that Fe3 plus ions have a greater tendency to gain electrons than Zn2 plus ions. Standard electrode potentials now. So we've got the symbol E standard. So you'd always be given these in a table. So you can see we've got lots of different reduction processes here and the standard electrode potential or the voltage that um, each half cell would have. So the definition of the standard electrode potential is the EMF or the voltage of a half cell measured against the standard hydrogen electrode, SHE for short. And you'll notice there's the standard hydrogen electrode and it's got an electrode potential of zero volts. So the standard conditions are 298 Kelvin. All the solution concentrations have to be one mole per decimeter cubed. If you're dealing with a gas, the pressure has to be 100 kilopascals. And as I've just said, the standard hydrogen electrode is assigned a zero voltage. So therefore the voltage that you measure must be that of the other half cell. So we'll look at how we actually measure these now. If you wanted to measure the standard electrode potential of a metal metal ion half cell, so again using our example zinc 2 plus zinc, on the left hand side we've got the standard hydrogen electrode. So we've got hydrogen gas coming in at 100 kilopascals, 298 Kelvin, H plus ions at 1 mole per decimeter cubed, a platinum electrode, and on the right hand side we've got the other half cell, so that's zinc solid rod dipping into a one mole per decimeter cubed solution of Zn2 plus ions. So the wire that connects the two electrodes allows a flow of electrons. And connecting the two beakers is what we call the salt bridge. And that's typically just a strip of filter paper soaked in potassium nitrate solution. 
Now for the exam, all you need to be able to say is that it allows a flow of ions. But what it's doing is the K plus ions and the NO3 minus ions flow out of the salt bridge into the relevant beakers and that addresses any charge difference that builds up between them. If you wanted to measure the standard electrode potential of an ion-ion half cell, I've already populated the standard hydrogen electrode on the left there. So on the right, you'd have your one mole per decimeter cubed each solutions of Fe3 plus and 2 plus and a platinum electrode. And the final type of half cell you could be asked about is a gas half cell. So how would you measure the electrode potential of that? You would connect the standard hydrogen electrode to, in this case, chlorine chloride. So we've got chlorine gas being fed in at 100 kilopascals, 298 Kelvin, and the solution would be chloride ions at one mole per decimeter cubed. So we'd therefore need a platinum electrode for that. So if we have a look now at what happens when you connect two half cells together, and we'll look at the cell reaction that's going to take place and the cell potential, or in other words, the voltage that we'll get from the cell. So the diagram there below shows the electrochemical cell made from the zinc 2 plus zinc half cell, so that's on the left, and the Fe3 plus Fe half cell, and that's on the right. So the first thing to do is, using the information here, we can establish which of the half cells is going to gain electrons, and in other words, move in the forwards direction. And you can see this one here has a more positive standard electrode potential. So the iron 3 plus iron half equation will move in the forwards direction. In other words, from left to right. So because of that, the zinc half equation has to move in reverse. So it's going to go in that direction. So the reaction that's going to take place in the cell will be this one here. So the Fe3 plus ions are going to take electrons from the zinc that's going to generate iron and Zn2 plus ions. And you'll see to when you combine the two half equations together, we need the electrons to disappear. So I've multiplied the iron half equation by 2 and the zinc by 3. The cell potential, or E cell, you calculate that by taking the most positive standard electrode potential and subtract from that the least positive. So E cell, most positive minus least positive. So it's going to be 0.77 minus minus 0.76. So this cell would have a potential or a voltage of 1.53 volts. Another thing you'll notice is that when we multiply the half equations out to get the overall equation, we don't do that with the standard electrode potentials. So now we've established the cell reaction and overall cell potential, we'll have a look at the processes that are going to take place at each electrode. Remember, we were able to see from the um, standard electrode potentials which direction these half equations were going to run in. So electrons flow away from the least positive half cell to the most positive half cell. Remember, this half cell is going to run in the forwards direction, it's going to pull electrons away from this one. So this will lose its electrons, this one gains them. So the electrons are flowing away from the zinc and towards the iron. The most positive half cell is the positive electrode and that's the cathode, not the anode, the cathode. So you can see that the iron um, half cell with its most positive standard electrode potential is the positive half cell or the positive terminal and that's the cathode. So the least positive half cell is the negative electrode and that is called the anode. So in terms of processes, well we've got reduction taking place at the cathode and we've got oxidation taking place at the anode. And hopefully that will help you remember it. Red cat says in electrochemical cells, reduction takes place at the cathode. Remember, that's the positive electrode. So if we move on to making predictions now, we've got a question here. Can iodine oxidise a solution of Fe2 plus ions to Fe3 plus ions? So if that was the case, the top half equation would need to run in reverse and the iodine one would need to run forwards. Now if we look at the standard electrode potential values, 
you can see that the Fe3 plus 2 plus is actually the most positive one. So if you have a look at the arrows, they're actually going to run in that direction instead. So iodine is not a powerful enough oxidizing agent. Its standard electrode potential is less positive than the Fe3 plus Fe2 plus. So what's actually going to happen is the iron 3 plus will oxidize I minus to I2. So the actual cell reaction that's going to take place will be iron 3 plus ions are going to take electrons from the I minus ions. That's going to generate Fe2 plus and I2. And remember, we've got to get the electrons to cancel out, and so therefore we need to double this um, half equation. And finally, we'll look at some limitations of these predictions. So we'll start with non-standard conditions. Standard electrode potentials refer to standard conditions, which we've already mentioned. So if you're operating your cell under non-standard conditions, then the electrode potential values are going to be different to the standard electrode potential values. And just think about it, as the cell operates, the um, concentrations of the solutions are going to change. Remember, the standard electrode potential values are measured at one mole per decimeter cubed. So as these change, the voltages are going to change. Rate of reaction. So it might be that your rate is very, very slow. So it looks like a reaction that is feasible is not actually happening. And the activation energy could also be way too high and that would prevent your feasible reaction from taking place.